Greetings, paranormalists! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! We know so very little about the afterlife. Or the ether of the soul. Perhaps this is why it's so fascinating to us. Because it's something science hasn't even tried to explain. Which brings me to today's topic. Ghostbusters! Released in the summer of 1984, Ghostbusters tells the story of a group of fringe scientists whose discoveries hold the key to stopping an ancient evil. It's also remembered as the birth of a much-loved franchise, which spun off a sequel, two animated series, and several other related products, including the much-missed Ecto Cooler drink. Of course, I've only heard tell of the stories of Ecto Cooler since they never actually sold it in the UK. But we won't go into that. Instead, suit up, strap on your proton pack, fire up the Ecto-1 and get ready for the ride of your life alongside the best, the beautiful, the only, Ghostbusters! The first of our heroes to be introduced is the disreputable Dr. Peter Venkman, who we see conducting a rigged ESP test. His colleague, Dr. Raymond Stance informs Venkman, and by extension the audience, of evidence of the existence of ghosts. A ghost was sighted at the university library building. Could it be real? At the library, we meet our third protagonist, Dr. Egon Spengler. And our first ghost, which doesn't inspire confidence in our heroes. <laughs> Ah, heroes, ladies and gentlemen. Though to be fair, they don't have all their equipment yet. But oh dear, the university has had enough of Venkman and Co's brand of science. This isn't viewed as a setback, however, as Peter decides to go into business with paranormal defence. And Ray is very impressed with their new HQ. Well, at least one of the team seems to like it. Meet Dana Barrett, an otherwise ordinary woman whose apartment building just happens to have been designed by a traumatised lunatic. Her involvement in this tale kicks in when her groceries start exploding. And just look what's in her fridge! Dana heads straight for the busters. Dr. Venkman immediately takes a shine to Dana and accompanies her to her apartment. Sadly, all of the spooky is gone. And just as the money runs out, the Ghostbusters receive their first real customer. One of New York City's fine hotels has a ghost on the 12th floor. It's been quiet for years, but now it's really acting up. This puppety blob of ectoplasmic residue will come to be known as Slimer. Ah, Slimer. Unofficial mascot of the Ghostbusters. And in case you're wondering, Slimer gets its name from sliming Dr. Venkman. Which we're skipping because YouTube. Our heroes corner Slimer in the ballroom and make the capture. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the very first ghost bust. Pretty successful all around, I'd say. Following this, we montage through a successful period for the fledgling Ghostbusters and meet our fourth buster, Mr. Winston Zedmore. Peter awkwardly tries to get closer to Dana, and we learn a little more about her haunting. Gozer, the Gozerian, malevolent deity of the ancient Hittites, Mesopotamians, and Sumerians, able to take multiple forms and powerful enough to rend this world asunder. But the EPA isn't happy with the side effects of ghost busting. Now, Walter Peck isn't supposed to be a sympathetic character, but I can see his point here. I mean, Taking the kind of negative energies that ghosts represent... Yeah... Long story short, a ghost containment unit in the middle of New York City is just not green. And worse, something big is brewing. Something that takes over Dana Barrett's apartment and sets its sights on her neighbour, Louis Tully. And when Peter arrives, it's already too late. Luckily for Louis Tully, 
He was not killed at the paws of the Hellhound, but rather possessed by a spirit that calls itself Vin's Clotho. But the next morning, the EPA return in force. And they shut down the containment unit, freeing an awful lot of ghosts. Oh, my, my, my. Walter Peck, what have you wrought, you officious little man? And worse, the Busters are jailed, where they make a shocking discovery. Dana's apartment building was designed by a Gozer-worshipping madman to be an antenna for spectral energy. She's living in the corner penthouse of Spook Central. But then the mayor of New York intervenes. And so the Busters are back in action and the stage is set for our finale. Our heroes make their way to the top of the apartment building and meet Gozer the Gozerian. In my own experience, if someone asks you if you're a god, nine times out of ten, it's better to be completely honest about it. Too bad they picked the one time they were supposed to lie. Ray chooses a ferociously fluffy form for the rise of the Gozerian. Our heroes have only one option left. They fire their particle throwers at the Gozerian gate in a unified stream configuration, causing a total protonic reversal and destroying the gate in a spectacular sequence that we have to skip because, again, YouTube. This is getting out of hand. And so our movie ends with the Busters triumphant and Dana and Lewis unscathed. So then, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the best, the beautiful, the only Ghostbusters. And as you might imagine, I just have to put this one into the house of love. This is a classic in every sense of the word. And while the mild swears might preclude it from being suitable for the youngest of children, it's certainly a very good family film. And while one might argue that the effects are dated now, and the pace is a little uneven, the romance subplot being entirely undernourished, the film is more than saved by Bill Murray's deadpan snarker Peter Venkman. The cast chemistry is fantastic, the quotable lines fly thick and fast, and the effects are fantastic for 1984. So if you're looking for a great night in, who are you gonna call? So thanks for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. So long, folks.